and everyone. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, I had a good time with the Ferguson. It, it was a good time. Uh, he yeah. got buried, he got buried in the sand, yeah. cheating and something. And toy. And, uh, Jack. Oh, toy did help. Yeah. He did help, yes he did. <laughs> and, uh, Jack was working for him and other things. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I had a good time. And, uh, I think we were making plans for something different next year, I don't know, but one of these days I'd like to take a cruise and have a sign-up list and anybody wants to go on this cruise classic cruise or something like that. Um, I think that would be fun. Right now the cruise prices are a little bit down because they <laughs> take a beating. So, hey, you're getting handed out an outline. Uh, the uh, computer that I have back here, I didn't bring my laptop, but the computer that I have on the desktop doesn't do media shout or PowerPoint. So I wasn't able to do a PowerPoint, and I thought a handout would be good too, because maybe if you want to take notes or something, you can. And uh, so um, Adam's uh, handing out an outline, and uh, we're going to kind of go through this a little bit. And uh, Adam can meet one too, so I know where I am. Not just by my notes. Thank you, sir. Anybody need one that didn't get one? Uh, Mormonism, also known as Latter-day Saints, is a very popular and growing religion. I'm not sure why. They offer nothing. Um, in the sense that what Christ offers uh, in the way of salvation, um, it seems like, uh, you know, when we went through the Jehovah's Witness, Everything is works oriented, the very little grace, and the whole concept of who Jesus is. We're going to find out, discover that in Mormonism it's the same thing. Jesus is not who the Holy Bible says he is, according to the Mormons. And I'm going to go through a, a quick deliverance of some things tonight. Uh, and then we'll get more in depth in the next two Sunday nights. i got to spread this out to over three because there's an awful lot of stuff. Next Sunday night, my goal is to get into some of the doctrines more closely. And then uh, with that, I have some video clips that I would like to show of a secret camera that somebody carried into the Mormon temple and some of the rituals and stuff that takes place there. Uh, and then uh, on the last week we'll do a, a thing that what the Bible says versus what the Mormon book says. Mormons are also known as Latter-day Saints. There are a couple of different sects and branches of them, but pretty much they, their doctrine is the same. Uh, a lot of times people, the only thing people really associate Mormonism with is that they're allowed to have more than one wife. Why, I do not know. I do good with the one that I have. She puts up with me more than I put up with her, trust me on that. Uh, and, uh, it, it, it's funny because the wives aren't allowed to have more than one husband. But the husband's a lot of have for a long wife. And that's kind of what they associate Mormonism with. But that isn't even as prevalent, except in a few uh, uh, sects of the Mormon church where they're like way out there. It's not like it used to be. And uh, who can tell me who is the founding person of Mormonism? Joseph Smith, who was. He uh, believes that God had delivered him a location where these golden tablets were located that was left or delivered um, way before Christianity even exploded onto the scene. And there's a group called the Neophytes. So if you have your, your thing, Mormonism teaches that God used to be a man on his world. So God was a man on another world someplace else. 
and he followed the strict teachings of whomever his God was. And he was so good at it that he was elevated or given privilege to be a God of another planet, which is ours. And then he became, by following these laws and ordinances, uh, he became a God of his own world. In his present God state, he rules our world. He has a body of flesh and bones, the love of Mormons believe. Now, we'll get into this in a little bit later here. Um, there's two different schools of thoughts with a lot of Mormons. One is he is flesh and bone and became a spirit. So he was a spirit, flesh and bone, became a spirit. Um, he was flesh and bone, became a spirit, and remains a spirit. So there's there's controversy there in some of their teachings. But uh, right now, he is uh, he has his flesh and bones. And Mormonism teaches that God used to be a man. And what he had done was, while in his man state, he brought his wife with him from another world. Okay. So in essence, she is a goddess. Now, I don't know where people come up with this stuff. You know, if, if you are a true, hardcore, Bible-believing person, you understand that this is ridiculous. Um, but this is a lot of things that they teach. And so, Apparently, God was married on his other world. And since God and his wife are both exalted persons, they each possess physical bodies. In their exalted states as deities, they produce spirit children that grow and mature in the spirit realm. Okay? So what you have is... God and his wife, which were not gods on their other world, but they followed the decrees of their God on the other world and were both elevated to a God's status over our world. And they produced children as deities. Who do you think the two children mainly are? What two main children? The, the God and his wife. And I'm using a small g as much as I can when I mention God, according to the Mormons. Jesus. Jesus and who? Lucifer. Lucifer. They're brothers. The Mormons teach that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. And basically, Lucifer was born along with the rest of us. Okay? So we too were somehow born of this union with God and his wife. So Mormonism teaches that we all pre-existed in the spirit realm, having been a production produced by God and his spirit wife. Therefore, we all existed in the spirit form, coming down and entering the bodies of human beings that were born on earth. And during this time, see, if you're a Mormon, and this is what you believe, God and his wife had sexual relationships, and you are a product of that. So he's, he's got billions of children. And what has happened is this. Once you became non-spirit, and became flesh and bone, you have lost your memory, or as they put it, it has been veiled. You have lost your memory of what it was like in the spirit realm. And your goal is to get back to the spirit realm. Okay? That, that's your ultimate goal, to get back to the spirit realm. But what you are here on this planet is flesh and bone, born of God, working your way to get back to the spirit realm. This is why you have no memories <laughs> of what it was like before. <laughs> 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 
God the Father, who is also called Elohim, was concerned for the salvation of the people on earth. So for whatever reason, when we left the spirit realm and became flesh and bone, God was concerned for our salvation. So he devised a plan by which Jesus would become this plan of salvation for the world. Now here's the problem between Jesus and Lucifer. Jesus accepted the plan to save us, Lucifer did not. And that's why Lucifer basically was kicked out of the family and made to roam here on earth. And so he became jealous, he rebelled. In his rebellion, he convinced a large portion of the spirits existing in the heaven realm to side with him and oppose his father, All angels, according to the Bible, are created. They're not born of God. They're created beings like God created Adam and Eve. They were created. Okay? You were created. The Bible says you were knit together in your mother's womb, but God did this. However, Satan, being the second born of God, or Lucifer, as they actually call him. They don't really refer to him as Satan. But Lucifer, he becomes jealous that, you know, and, and there are some different places. And what I've got here is from two or three different sources. Um, one is from C-R-A-N called, it's Christian Apologetics, basically, is what it is. And there are two different schools of thought. Some say he became jealous because Jesus was chosen be the vehicle to save the world where he was not, and then others just said he didn't want the earth to be saved, and he was jealous that God was going to love everybody else and try to save everybody else. And, and see, the, 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 the thing that I have trouble wrapping my brain around is this. If we were spirits and they became flesh, as God did, and he has set up some laws for us to live by, Why would Satan be upset? Well, it's basically the same reason he's upset now. He wanted the glory. God being more powerful, or Lucifer became jealous, and in his rebellion, he convinced a large portion of spirits existing in heaven to side and oppose God. God, however, his dad, being more powerful than they, cursed these rebellious spirits and they became demons. So they actually believe in a demonology. They can never be born in human bodies. So these fallen spirits are demons, and they will never have a chance, according to Mormonism, they will never have a chance to put on flesh and bone. Become human The remaining spirits sided with God since they chose the better way. When it comes time for them to live on earth, they have the privilege of being born in races and locations that are relative to their condition and choice made in the spirit realm. So whatever spirit realm, they, they like a certain climate better or more accurate, they, that's where they can be born. Let me... me throw something out at you, Republicans and Democrats. I'm not getting political. I'm not choosing favorites by any means. A person who believes this had a chance to become our president. And he claimed to be a Christian. Now let me tell you something. As much as we believe in what we know, he is nothing close to being a Christian. And in my opinion, he is nothing close to being a godly man, just as anybody else who may be president now or president in the past. You know, everybody came on blue when JFK became president because they thought he was going to turn the country into Catholicism. I think a lot of people became nervous at the fact that uh, Romney could become president because he was going to change the country into Mormon country. I, I don't believe that is going to happen. But let me tell you why it 
it's so important for you to start praying that God would raise up somebody in our country that would lead us back to biblical principles and not to junk like this. And lead us into biblical principles and not be an enemy of God declaring abortion is good and right. Why is Mormon becoming the second fastest growing religion In the Mormon plan of salvation, there needed to be a Savior, and so that person was Jesus. But Jesus was a spirit in heaven. So for him to be born on earth, guess what? In order for Jesus to be born on earth, here's what Brigham Young has said. Now, Brigham Young, you've heard Brigham Young University, they've got an incredible football team, they've got countless funds. Brigham Young was, was a what, you, what they would consider a father of uh, Mormonism. High up. Here's what he said. And he is also considered the second prophet of the Mormon church, by the way. Here's what he said. Instead of letting any other man do it, God the Father did it with Mary, quote, unquote. Brigham Young said that the birth of our Savior was as natural as the birth of her parents. He says, essentially, what this means is that God the Father came down, had sexual relationships with Mary in uh, his, his spirit daughter. So Mary was his spirit daughter, and he had sexual relationships with Mary, his spirit daughter, to produce the body of Jesus. There are some Mormons who don't entertain that as doctrinally sound as Brigham Young has. But it's not denied at the university and it's not denied in, the, in their doctrine. They have not denied it. So nevertheless, Jesus was born, he got married, and he had children. You know, you think something strange is the Da Vinci Code that came out a few years and scared a bunch of into believing that Jesus, Mary, Mary Magdalene, moved to somewhere in France to hide out, but he was later caught and crucified. But Mary had become pregnant, and her offspring and she went to Paris or went to France. You know, that is that is prevalent even in Christian circles as a possibility. You know, James says, don't entertain. And First Timothy says, don't entertain. These, these types of things. Okay? And yet, the devil is so powerful that he's got people believing this junk. Okay. Yes? I have, um, just in the culture of Mary Kay, there are quite a few women of the Mormon faith, I guess that's what you call it. Uh, they're all successful, go figure. I mean, I'm like, talk on those Mormons. But um, one thing that I'm Facebook friends with several, and one thing that they do, they do think they're Christian, without yeah. a doubt. They yeah. think that they are Christian. And if you'll notice, like on their affiliation, they'll say it'll say Christian slash LDS. Right. And uh, and there's no telling, there's no telling them that they're not. Right. They 100% think that they're Christian. Another thing is that I keep popping in my head when you say, why is it the second fastest growing um, religion? Uh, Something that I discovered, I went to Salt Lake City, Utah, about six years ago. Beautiful place. Right. It absolutely looks like that the Lord just has blessed that land. It is perfect. I had no oily skin. My hair looked great. I mean, it was a great atmosphere. I mean, it's just, it's just a great place to be. And uh, the lady that was showing us around, well, I, I went on a tour with a lady who was a Mormon, and that was interesting. But the lady who picked us up from the airport, I just assumed that she was a Mormon because I thought that 99.9% .9 of everybody that lived in Salt Lake City, Utah, was a Mormon. And so, of course, the whole time on the plane, I'm praying, Lord, help me, help me lead her to you, Lord. <laughs> and all that. But when we got there, Tammy, she's the lady that picked us up. She's not. She actually is goes to a Christian church. And uh, she said, you know, this is Mormonsville. She said, there's tons of people here who are Mormon. And I'm like, well, you know, how does that work? And she's just like, I'm going to tell you, this is the perfect place to live if you can get around their doctrine because they are some of the finest people you'll meet. 
and they live and die by the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments is something that God designed for how we treat other people, and they've mastered it. So I think that that probably has, that's a lure. That's the reason why people feel safe and want to be part of it. Exactly, and if you remember all through Romney's presidential run, he, he, he would battle the word Mormon with people, but he always called himself a Christian. Oh, always. And, yeah. and, you know, according to the Bible, they're not, but you can't tell them that, like you said. No, it didn't have something different. I think another point is um, that I'll get into this next week, not tonight, but I'll bring this up briefly because I just want to bring it up briefly later on. Another pleasing aspect is you can be baptized for ancestors mm-hmm. and friends. That's appealing to a lot of people. Huh? That's appealing to a lot yeah. of people. Yeah, yeah, and, and see if, if, if you know Uncle Joe was a was a mean person, I could be baptized for Uncle Joe, and he will not face the devastation that awaits him. And um, in fact, if I some of the video that I'll show next week shows Mormons actually being baptized for ancestors. Huh? must get a workout. Well, you should see the right arm of the guy that baptized. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that that happens constantly. Be like a constant thing. Yeah. And you might see a person getting baptized more than once for several different people per baptism. Aren't they elevated somehow that way by the? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, yeah, there's, there's other, there, and listen, there, is there a thing from secret handshakes? Um, secret underwear. Huh? <laughs> Some kind of underwear. Yes. Yes, they yes they wear a garment. They wear, they wear a garment. There, yeah, secret. there's an undergarment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, at awards night, magic, those, I think it's called magic. Yeah. On, on, on awards night, Mary Kay, you can tell which one. Uh, which of the ladies on stage are Mormons by what kind of dress they have on because they wear a garment with everything, like a uh-huh. power spank or something. But anyway, that, yeah. yeah. You're right. Exactly. Hey, my underwear is holy. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> so Jesus dies on a cross. But Remember, he's married to his children. So Jesus dies on the cross, paid for sins, but not only on the cross. According to Mormonism, the atonement of Christ was not only on the cross. It actually began with him in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross. Well, I want to suggest to you that at the beginning of time, God had a plan for salvation and yeah. had it established before the creation of time. I want to suggest to you that in the Garden of Eden, uh, when innocent blood was shed for man, Christ knew he was going to die. And I'm also going to say that, suggest to you that his entire birth and ministry led up to the crucifixion. Mm-hmm. And so for them to say this, it just they're just flowering it, putting pretty little flowers on this. Um, And so in Mormonism, men and women have the potential to be gods. Another reason why this can seem appealing. And we look at this and we think, if they they believe the Ten Commandments, how do they get by the way God's for if they're going to become gods? You know, that's a good question. I didn't think of that. Did you hear what he said? I heard what he said, but that's just coming from the history of Christ the real Christian woman who told me they live and die by the by the Ten Commandments, but that's how they live. I think they meant as a latter part where you're dealing with others. They might have omitted because they don't drink and all those Yeah. Hey, hey, do you remember the what was her name? Arius, Jody Arius trial, and the man she killed. He was a Mormon, and a lot of the testimony, I guess, before he actually met her how good and upstanding young man he was, how he was he was not given into drunkenness, he was not into drugs, he was not, you know, the Mormons who are true to Mormonism are good, moral, upstanding citizens. You know, 
I probably can say this, you know, 90% assuredness. I don't think there'd be many closets in Romney's skeleton. Uh, <laughs> skeletons in Romney's closet. Because he's, he, you know, they live. And that's, you know. So, you know, you look at this and you take this. Um, again, just like. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if Christians had that same degree of loyalty to Christ and the church as they do to their beliefs. And what the we did? I mean, Christianity changed the world. It seems like now the world's starting to change Christianity. We're allowing them to hold up. So I give you guys speak up. Christ changed the world. And he used he used Ordinary people. Lorenzo Snow is the president of the Mormon Church. He says this: as God was, as God once was, man is. As God is, man may become. So what he is saying is, God once was what we are, and one day we can become what God is now. God was a sinner at one time? Uh, <laughs> that's a good point. I never thought of that. I, you know, my thinking was just that God was once a man on this planet. Um, so, so do they believe that there are just tons and tons and tons of little universes out there with really great people who get to be God with a little G and have all their little earths and... Wow. Yeah, and, and, and the, the Book of Mormon has passages that allude to that. It's interesting, too, in my study. You know what the word for Satan is? How it's pronounced in Chinese? Does anybody know? The word for Satan is warm up. Chinese. Where did they get the word warm in front? I'm not sure. Was that a part of the revelation? You know, I have that in my notes, and they're back there in the computer, and I didn't, I didn't go in that curious. direction. But I, I can't remember, but there is a section of, of where the word Mormon comes from. Man, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Um, well, let me move on. In order to reach this exalted state of godhood, you good people out here, in order to reach godhood, a person first must become a good Mormon. I guess bad Mormon wouldn't work. You must become a good Mormon. Here's what you must do. This is why their church is so financially stable. They are the second wealthiest organization, religious organization in the world. Okay. Actually, the notes I started off with your outline, but a little bit of my notes before that talk about that there was a group from Jerusalem um, who were neophytes, okay, and they they were a member of four main groups of settlers in the ancient Americas, and they were uh, described in the Book of Mormon as Lamanites. Jaredites and Muletites. Some Latter-day Saint scholars believe that the forebearers of the Neophytes settled somewhere in present-day Central America after departing Jerusalem. However, both the Smithsonian Institution and the National Geographic Society have issued statements that they have seen no evidence to support these claims of the Book of Mormon. And furthermore, no secular archaeologist archeolog or historian can support their existence. And what's amazing to me about that is this. Many times throughout history, people said, here's proof that the Bible is not real. We can't find Sodom and Gomorrah. 
tells us about where it was, and we've excavated the whole place, and we can't find it. One day, in 1930, some boys are draining, some, some guys are draining a lake. What do you think they found? Burned city ruins. The exact location that the Bible says on the west. But because there had been a lake there for centuries, they just assumed the Bible was untrue and not right. So all through history, we've been proving that some of the things that the Bible has said is real. But in the Book of Mormon, they cannot find any, any evidence of these four tribes. Uh, so in order to reach this exalted state of God, that a person must first become a good Mormon, and here's why they're so wealthy. They are required pay a full 10% tithe to the Mormon church. They follow various laws and ordinances of the church, and that's how they are found worthy. So if you're a good Mormon, you pay a full, it, it is a requirement. What, what if Artemis Christian Church started putting out a requirement in order for you to be a member here, you had to pay your full you couldn't come into church. Well, we had none of that. I'm right or wrong. I'm just saying that's not what happened. But it's a requirement for Mormons to be a good Mormon and to follow the decrees in order to reach this spirit world. Christ never made a decree. Christ himself, he said, hey, what is due Caesar's? You know? He never said, give your 10% to the church. The Old Testament had laws to do that. Paul comes along and encourages that same mentality of paying a, paying a tithe to the church, but it's not commanded. And it's definitely not commanded for you to be a good Christian and make it to heaven. But it is encouraged. But it's not commanded. Do you consider a commandment where Jesus said these things you ought to have done when he said he tithed and all that stuff, but you've left other things undone? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't you know. Do you think he was just encouraging him as a good Jew? Yeah, I think he was encouraging him as a good Jew because uh, I had my shirt off. Surprise. At the beach in Billy noticed something on my shoulder. <laughs> she had never noticed before. <laughs> There's a tattoo on my shoulder. Now it's old and faded. It's over 20. Years. I got it when I was 19. It's really old. Almost 30. Yeah, and it's faded. And you said something that is bringing to mind what you're saying here. Well, you should have never got that in the first place. Even though it's a crown of thorns. And a bit now. Hey, Billy is right. She. I'm not putting her down. I'm not. You know. What I'm saying, Billy is saying, you, you shouldn't have done that. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. But here's the thing. I think Jesus was doing the same thing. Hey, as good Jews, you should have been paying your tithe to the temple. You should have been doing the laws of Moses. Okay. And so I, I think I think that is in the same realm. And, and, I, and I'm taking up for Billy. I'm not I'm not putting her down. She, she has a belief system, and I applaud that. And then Billy's not wishy-washy in her faith. She's opinionated, but she's not wishy-washy. <laughs> And it's so funny because my dad preached to me, you will not get a tattoo as long as you live under my roof. So when I moved to college, I was 18 years old, I was there for a year, a lot of people were getting these Christian tattoos, so to speak. So I come home and I said, Dad, I think I'm going to get a tattoo. I think I'll go with you. <laughs> so he goes to a tattoo parlor with me. So while they're putting a tattoo on my arm, my dad, straight face, didn't crack a smile, goes to the uh, tattoo artist and says, do you think you could tattoo a fly on the end of my nose? 
And he had to back away and start laughing. And he said, please don't make me laugh while I'm giving this man a tattoo. And that's my dad. So anyway, uh, you know, it, it goes back to, even as Christians, we should be following the laws of God. We should be reading our Bibles. We should be praying. We should not be forsaking the assemblies. We should be doing all of these things already. And that's what they're doing, the Mormons. The good Mormons, they're doing this. They are involved in evangelism. Heavily. I told you this. The only time I, I was at this village in Haiti that rarely, rarely had seen a white person, and there were some kids there, teenagers and younger, that had never seen a white person. And so we go to this village in Haiti up on this mountain. And as we're driving up, we're passing two bicyclists. Black pants, white shirts, and ties. A little bad to say, elder so and so. The Mormons beat us to the top of the hill. They, and let me tell you something. If you're not evangelizing, you're not a good one. No, let me tell you. Is there somewhere in the Bible that says if you're not witnessing for Christ, you're not a good Christian? No. What it says is, Matthew, this is from the mouth of Jesus, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Jesus says, all authority has been given to me that's been on heaven and on earth, in heaven and on earth. All authority is given to me. So here's what I want you to do. The actual Greek phrase is this. As you are going out into the world, as you are going out. So, you know, we read, go therefore into all the world. The original Greek says, as you are going out. So it's in the assumption that this is what you need to be doing. You need to be going out. And as you go out into the world, make disciples. Okay? So what you see there is, you know, but something that we do very well, I think, sometimes is we portray Christ in our workplace. And, and, and to me, that's a form of witnessing. So at this point, if they're good Mormons, if they do these things, they will receive a temple recommend whereupon the Mormon is allowed to enter their sacred temple in order to go through a set of secret rituals. Not every person who is called a Mormon or believes in the Mormon church is allowed to just go to the temple. It's not like Catholicism in Notre Dame. You just can't go up and ring the bell, let me in. You'd be granted access. It's not like any church in America. You can walk into any church in America, but in the Mormon church, you cannot go to the temple. Where they go? Well, they, they have their own little churches here. But until they get a recommendation, I don't know who actually would do the recommend, recommending, but they have to be invited. What yeah. they what day do they go? Is it once a year or once a week? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Jay, I, when I took my little tour with the little Mormon girl, uh -huh. um, we were driving to like a park city, Utah, just around the different communities. And the way Salt Lake City is laid out, you have pods of communities, these little pods. And each little pod has to go, each person who lives in an area has to go to the church, and they call that a church, to the church in that area. Because, like, one lady was talking about how she had moved across town, and now she's been assigned to a different church. And she said, well, we've got to start at our new church, blah, blah, blah. Um, when we went by the tabernacle, which is the big, you know, place in the center, um, and, and it was kind of strange because, like, I was, like, really, I was like, so how, what's your worship service like? You know, I had a good badness with me. So what's your worship service? She's asking questions, I'm asking questions because we were with this gal. And uh, she would tell us nothing. No. She would absolutely, and she would do it politely. And she would do it with a smile, but she would absolutely. But we did get out of her that they do sort of have um, a Sunday school hour, sort of, kind of. And that's for visitors. And that, that. Yes, and that's for the kids, and that's all about the kids. And then they have their church time. She never would tell me anything about their worship. And she was very vague on the tabernacle uh, because you have to be invited. You can't just go. Like, 
she almost made it sound like that you would drop dead in the doorpost if you went there and were, I mean, you can't go. You can't get in. You have to be invited. So. Uh, well, uh, when I was at Hillsboro, Ohio, preaching at Sugar Tree Ridge Christian Church, one of our elders had a son who was a few years younger than me, and I was, I was in my late 20s when I went there, uh, who was dating a Mormon girl. And then she called me and gave him an ultimatum. We're either going to break up or you're going to marry a Mormon. And uh, so he, he started the, the ritual to become a Mormon. And the thing was, he was allowed to go to that Sunday school time, but he was asked to leave when it came time to worship because he had not yet made that commitment to Mormonism. And he had not yet gone through certain rituals and rites. So he was not allowed to stay for the church. And I'm saying what it broke his family's heart. It just broke their heart. My understanding now is that he is not involved in the church of the Mormons. She is, but he's come back to Sugar Tree Ridge. But she will not let her son be raised in the Christian church. And now he wishes he had never gone. Um, so at this point, they receive a, a temple recommend whereupon the Mormon is allowed to enter their sacred temples in order to go through a set of secret rituals. Baptism for the dead. You can also choose your celestial mate and various oaths of secrecy and commitment. Additionally, four secret handshakes are taught so the believing Mormon, upon entering the third level of Mormon heaven, can shake hands with God in a certain pattern. So in order to make it to the third heaven, it's my understanding you've got to know some secret handshakes. <laughs> in order to shake hands with God, you've got to know. Now, this, this camera that was trying to record this was hit on a person. So, apparently, this guy who had made it for all these levels and was doing this for whatever reason, whether he was trying to see what it's like in the Mormon church and he spent years doing this and finally got accepted, he, he had a hit camera and he was able to film this. There, there are things where they're shaking hands, and I'm trying to look, and I don't see any, you know, weirdness. So it has to be something within the clasp. I don't know. I'm sure the internet has something. The, the celestial ritual for the purpose of permitting entrance into the highest level of heaven. So this is the ritual that is, you know, so you can get into the highest level of heaven. And a final note here. For those who achieve the highest of heavens, exaltation to Godhood awaits them. There he or she will be permitted to have his or her own planet and be God of his own world. And the Mormon system will be expanded throughout the universe. You guys want to be good Mormons. Someday you will be a god of a planet. Those who achieve the highest of heaven, exaltation to God that awaits them, that he or she will be permitted to have his or, own, his or her own planet. But when I was reading from another source, the Book of Mormon neophytes are described as Mormonism teaches that God used to be a man on his world, and he became a God by following the laws. He brought 
his wife to this world. So, you know, it could be that. Or it could be that he was married before he became a god. When he becomes a god, she is grandfathered it. Any questions or comments? Does nobody but Mormon say this? I thought you could see, go take a tour of that temple, tabernacle. Now, if Maybe they, it's just the worship service you can't go in. Yeah, if they do have tours to it, it's strictly very guarded and guided. Uh -huh. um, I'm probably never there in any kind of worship service or anything. No, you're not that definitely. Yeah. Me and you can't go ring the bell again. Well, I think another thing, too, which I think about the history of Christianity, and there is a lot of violence, obviously, uh, when you think about especially the early church, when the early church went through. But, um, I mean, there's some pretty hardcore violent, massive, like even massacre, at a massacre level, stuff that has gone on within within their church. And one of the leaders, it wasn't Brigham Young, somebody pretty up high up. I mean, we're talking one one sect like assassinated another, like just within their in their history. Um, now I did read where Joseph Smith um, agreed or gave his blessing on a certain I don't know if it was a if it was a murder or massacre. It was a massacre of a wagon train. There were people who yes. were kind of breaking off from some of the beliefs, and yeah. so they were going to go settle in another part of Utah. And they, it, it was bad. It was bad. Wasn't Joseph and his brother murdered? I, I think it was his brother. They were in jail, murdered. and a mob came in and ran into jail and killed them both. And that was over. Do with a non-Mormon newspaper or something. That was over the plural marriage issue. I think is why he, he was killed. Joseph Smith's brother? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's something to what Derek said that there was a non Mormon newspaper that had exposed some things that riled the crowd. All right, any questions? But you know, in the early years of uh, Catholicism, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, the popes would kill each I mean, they, they fought. Yeah, they, they did all kinds of things uh, just for that power, that hierarchy power. The first three, four hundred years, five hundred uh, years, I don't the, know. You know, the okay. middle or dark ages, that was going on. Yeah. And popes and kings were vying for power. Yeah. You know, one king would say, um, I want this section of the country. And the pope would say, well, you become a Christian. <coughs> that you can have that. And so it's almost like the popes would be pulling the strings on who would be king over what. Then it would be reversed for a time period. And, and you know, the kings would say, uh, you know, to the popes, you got to do this for me if you want to expand your belief system. So that, that just went back and forth. What's the start year for the Mormon religion? Uh, I mean, know that. Yeah, it yeah, it been yeah, I'm thinking it's in the 40s, 1840s. And then it, it, it actually started in New England, correct? And then they... Uh, oh, right, no, Joseph Smith was like... Okay, I think it meant she... Yeah. Yeah. It was organized on April 6, 1830 in Fayette, New York by Joseph Smith. New York. You received the revelation of these golden tablets. Golden plates. Golden plates. Yeah. 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 Else. Now next week what we get into is we'll actually get into some doctrine and we'll get into the, their belief system. We, we're going to see some videos and so don't forget we, you know, next week we're, we're going to get together about four. We're going to try to hand out some things. Whether it lasts an hour or not it, it doesn't matter. But what I'd like to do is for us to um, uh, get together invite people because the following week we're going to have a block party here. We're going to have games food, just hot dogs, stuff like that, it's not going to be, you know, as far as food wise, it's not going to be a, a big expense, but what we're going to do is uh, maybe have some live music, talk to some people, uh, get in, you know, a trailer, a uh, bed uh, out back, and get some power to it. So, it's just going to be a big block party, and it's going to be for us to invite the community of our teams. But next
next Sunday we'll actually get into more of the uh, doctrinal issues of Mormonism. And, uh, if there are no other comments or questions, Father, as we get ready to leave this place, help us to take Christ with us. Help us to represent Christ to the best of our ability by how we speak, how we act. Father, that people would see Jesus, who is not in himself, who we don't have to go through secret rituals to get to, that we simply get to believe. Father, that, that is an amazing difference between us and other religions. There's no work we believe. Help us, Father, to share that message.